Well, hey, crafty friends. It's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And in honor of Memorial Day and upcoming Fourth of July holidays, and just because we live in the United States, those of you that wa are watching that do actually live here, um, I thought today we would do one of the watercolor washes using a plastic bag, some Crayola watercolor markers, a little bit of watercolor paper, and make some American flags. So these are, um, they're really cool. They're super easy once you figure out your pattern. And uh, that's probably the part that I'm going to be explaining the most because I made a couple of flags backwards <laughs> and I made a pattern that was backwards uh, before I figured all of that out. But anyways, it's really cool. This is what they can look like. They all do seem to look different. I'm also going to show you how you can use a stain just a wood stain to um, make your watercolor paper look a little bit more vintage. So, as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to sprinkle. And let me just start at the very beginning. Okay, so I'm using this watercolor paper. It is eight by eight. It's Grumbacker. It's 140 pound uh, type of watercolor paper, and I got this at Walmart. You alternatively could do, this would be more the size of an actual flag, a rectangle. You could do some of this, which is nine by 12, or you can use Canson brand or any kind of watercolor paper that you have access to. The heavier, the better. Also, the rougher, the better. And I honestly don't think that you could get this effect using computer paper or craft paper. It needs to be watercolor paper, which is not terribly expensive. And then you're going to need a bag. Okay. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to draw, let me hold up a white piece here. You're going to draw on the back side of it. A flag and I'm going to tell you all the dimensions uh, okay and you're going to be drawing it backwards because when you flip it over or you're going to be drawing it the right way but when you color it it's going to be backwards you'll see <laughs> and then when you flip it over and put it on your paper it's going to be the right way um, okay so I made a pattern before I got started using some computer paper and my pattern is six and a half inches by six and a half inches square to go with this eight by eight uh, watercolor paper because I like to have a messy border. And this is square, so I needed a square flag. And then I just eyeballed it. I put three stripes right next to the part that would be blue with the stars, and then I put three stripes below. And so that I knew when I was making my pattern, which is the plastic, I just colored on or scribbled on it. Can you see what I'm talking about? Okay, and then I laid my paper, my plastic bag on top of my pattern. And let me think, how did I do that? This is the side I'm gonna color. Okay, just have to remember because I made this earlier today. Um, oh, okay. So I drew it on this back side with a sharpie, and we're going to color on the other side. This is very similar to what we did yesterday. This was my pattern for yesterday's Christ and Crafting project, which was a watercolor wash, also. And it was really cool. Um, if you missed that Christ and Crafting, uh, you could just click the videos tab here and watch it if you would like to. But we made these pieces of art, watercolor washes, using different colors of Crayola markers. 
And then this beautiful stencil that says, perhaps you were created for such a time as this, Esther 414. Um, okay, so this, is gonna, this plastic bag is gonna tell you where to color. And I wrote on the side that I need to remember to color on this side. Okay, so I am just using some Crayola markers. Um, what does it say about these? You have to be at least three years old to use these. They're children's markers. Um, I think these are washable, if I remember right, but I got them at Walmart. You can try with whatever markers you might ha have hanging around. And I'm just using the red and blue for this project. And so I'm going to start with the, um, the part of the flag that's the blue with the stars. And I'm just going to outline it. And if you have oopsies like I just did, right, a big bobble, you can just wipe that off. And then I'm basically just going to color that area in, and I'll hold it up in just a minute. The first flags that I made this morning were backwards. Uh, but once I figured out how to do it the right way, then it was a piece of cake. And I've gone out of my line a little bit, so I'm going to clean it up right here. which honestly doesn't matter because it's going to bleed a little bit anyway. So see, I've colored the blue, and now I'm going to color the red. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm outlining the area. Oops. Just a second. We're going to do this twice because we're going to do this one on white paper and then I'm going to show you how to stain your paper, your watercolor paper, and we'll do it again. So I got lots of questions after yesterday. Could you do this technique on wood was one of the questions. I don't... I mean, you could try, but I don't think you're going to get the effect that you're probably wanting because it's the watercolor paper that does the magic. And something that is porous, like a piece of wood, I don't think it's going to do what you want it to do. Also, I had people ask, could you do this on a stretched canvas? That might be worth trying. I have not tried it. Um... So if you try it, I would, and it works, I'd love to see pictures. This is this really fun project to do with your kids also. You don't have to do American flags. You could trace a coloring book or just let your kids doodle and play with spraying the water and manipulating it on the watercolor paper. Uh, I think it would even be fun for teens. I know it's fun for ladies in their 50s like me. I mean, I got up this morning after doing these projects yesterday, and I was excited to come into my craft room and start playing <laughs> with some more plastic bags and watercolor markers. Okay, I'm almost done. So the Sharpie marker is on the opposite side of this plastic bag, and that is what tell, is telling me, or showing me, where to color with my marker. All right, this is what it looks like. All right, so now, I am just using my handy dandy little magnolia DIY.com mister and some water. And I'm going to mist my paper just very lightly. 
And then I'm going to mist my plastic bag. And I think I'm also going to push my tripod thing back just a little bit as well. Okay, the trick with this project is figuring out how much water to use. Um, when you use a lot of water, you get more of this kind of effect. When you use less water, you get more this look. So, I, the watercolor paper is not expensive. I suggest that you just practice a little bit. Try it out, see what you like. Do three or four practice runs. Um, who knows, you may like those just as well. Okay, so this is my watercolor paper that I've misted. Here's my plastic bag. And I'm gonna basically figure out where I wanna lay it down. And I'm going to manipulate with my finger the blue part first. I don't really want to rub the blue into the red lines too much. And I don't want to rub the red lines into the blue or the white stripes. I hope you can see what I'm doing. It is going to go outside of the areas that you want it um, if you used a lot of water. Okay, so let's lift and peek. Oh my gosh. This looks fabulous. Okay, so this is what it looks like basically. And I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to blot off a little bit of the areas where I have really um, puddles, I guess, of the water and the Crayola marker. And honestly, with this one, I don't know, you tell me. I don't know if I'm gonna keep going or not because it looks so good. Let's leave it. And let me show you the other style that is this. Okay, and we may come back. I mean, is there anything that really needs to be done? We could pat the whole thing dry and just lay our little marker thing. This thing back on it for just a second. And push whatever droplets that are still on here onto our paper. It's going to be pretty dry. And I think it looks great. Okay, if you're watching this video and you're on Facebook and these comments right here are driving me crazy, you should be able to swipe them either up or down or side to side with your finger, with your cursor, with your mouse, depending on what device you're on, and get them to disappear. All right, I'm just cleaning off my plastic bag. And let's do a piece of paper with stain first. So again, you can use any um, it's hard to get out. Any brand watercolor paper that you want that you have access to. Um, some water, watercolor paper comes in a creamy color. This happens to be white. The heavier weight the better. And this is 100, where does it show it? Right here, 140 pounds. And it's Grumbacher. And I got mine at Walmart. I used to use pretty much only Canson brand, but then my Walmart stopped carrying that, so I switched. Um, okay, so I just mixed a little brown stain with some water this morning. And I'm using a cruddy brush. And we're just gonna brush it on our paper. 
And this is going to essentially make this paper look, I don't know, more vintage or something. Or give it a, a tan or brown tone. Nothing uh, super difficult about that. And then I'm just going to wipe it off. Clean this up, and I got my blow dryer out because that's the quickest way to dry your watercolor paper. I hope it will work with my um, extension cord. If it doesn't, then we'll use the heat gun. Oh yeah, it's gonna work. So tell me in the comments if you like the aged watercolor wash or if you prefer the wider one. Tell me what you think. Okay. I'm blowing everything off of my craft desk. Let me just move a couple things and see if I lost anything important back here. Huh. I am going to need that. I lost our bag that we're going to use. I don't want to tip this over, so let me move it over here. Okay, depending on how dark or light you want this to look, you could go over it again with another coat and then dry it, or just don't water down your stain as much as I did. Um, mine is just brown stain. Uh, that's, it's a water-based stain. If you don't have that, you can use brown craft paint, brown acrylic paint, whatever kind of brown paint you have, and dilute it with water, stir it up good, and that will work too. So nothing super special required for that. Okay, let's do this again. Here is my little plastic that we're going to color. And these are some of the ones. This is one that is this um, vintage color. And then here's two others. All right, let's start with the blue and star part. And I am just, if you hopped on late, um, come back when this is not live anymore and watch from the beginning because I talk about everything, where to get it, all that kind of stuff. But this is basically just a kid's Crayola marker in blue. And this is just a Ziploc bag. Uh, and then I used a Sharpie on the opposite side to kind of draw whoops, what I was wanting to do. Okay, and you can see right here that I went, I had an oopsie right there. So I'm just going to pick that up with a paper towel or a wipe or whatever you have handy. Get that 
up to there. All right, let me get a piece of paper out so I can show you along the way what we're doing. What do you guys think? You could frame these, yes, Carolyn. Um, you could do a lot of different things with them. I'm, I'm debating on uh, giving them away. I think I will. I'll save one for me, but I'll give the rest away. And just like yesterday, to get your name in my hat, just sprinkle this video to your social media. If you don't know what sprinkling is, ask in the comments and hopefully someone will answer you. It's just taking this video and sharing it to your Facebook page. Uh, or if you're in craft groups that allow it. Um, and then I'll pull a couple of names later today and I'll mail the, um, a couple of these flags on watercolor paper, these watercolor washes to you which is what I did yesterday with Christ and Crafting. So. I really don't like the red and blue to combine too much because it kind of looks sort of purpley brown. So I'm trying not to get my red mixed into the blue. I also had a lot of questions from yesterday when we did this. We did multiple different renditions of this. During Christ and Crafting, we talked about Queen Esther and how she was a willing participant in God's uh, perfect plan of redemption for all mankind. How she was a willing participant in that and we talked about how she was blessed because of it and we made these watercolor washes with this awesome stencil that is from Esther 414. Anyways, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I've had a lot of questions about what kind of markers you need to use. And um, I'm just using the ones that I had, which are these kitty ones. I'll hold them up again in just a second. Uh, they're Crayola. I don't know for sure if they're washable, but I think they are. Most kid stuff is made that way. This is the package. So I don't know. I haven't tried it with any other markers. I just was using what I had on hand, which is what I always say you should try to use what you have on hand. And these are recycled Ziploc bags even that I've had seashells or craft supplies in them. And I just consolidated and I'm reusing these bags. If you don't have the watercolor paper, that is one thing that I don't think you can substitute another kind of paper for. I really think you need watercolor paper and get the heavy stuff. Um, we'll do more projects like this in the future. So you can get whatever size appeals to you because there's all different sizes. But um, try to find the heaviest weight that you can that has sort of a, it has like a nubby texture to it. Um, okay, so a couple people are saying that they haven't been able to watch any videos in a while. And I just want to ask you guys, did you know that you can watch any video I've ever made in about the last almost four years here at DIY Dreaming? Anytime you want. Just by clicking the videos tab and scrolling down um, until you see it and then you click it and you can watch it on replay. So no worries if you haven't been able to watch in a while. Just come back when you have time and look through the, I title everything. Uh, look through the videos that I have to see what's there that you might want to watch because you might not want to watch everything and watch it when it's good for you. Okay, so 
this is what I've just done. And I'm going to give my paper a little spritz. And I'm also going to give my plastic bag a little spritz. And you'll see that it is going to start to have water beads on it. And then when you flip it over and lay it on your paper and just kind of massage it with your finger, that's where you get the uh, watercolor looking wash effect. Okay, so I'm going to start with the blue. And I'm just pushing that in. If I had multiple colors like what we did yesterday, that is where I would be moving things around to blend my colors. What this is designed to look like are those professional artists, those professional watercolor artists that can create those watercolor pictures that are so beautiful and the backgrounds and stuff, which I have no idea how to do that. So this is sort of a non-artist approach. And um, this is about the third time I've done a project, third or fourth time I've done a project using this technique, so it's not new. Um, okay, I'm going to pull up this corner and look, and gosh, it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to move this blue around a little bit. It is good to have some negative space. So this is what it looks like right now. And there's a few puddles, really, uh, where there's a lot of water. And I'm just going to kind of stick my wadded up paper towel in those to absorb those water puddles. And I'm fine if the stripes run into the white area. I'm totally fine with that. Okay, this is it. Is that not the most fabulous thing? Can you believe that I used a plastic bag and some brown stain? and some Crayola markers to create this. I can't believe it myself. So here's one that's whiter and here's one that's been stained. And here's one, oh, I already stained this one, and it's darker. Um, wait, is this a white? Maybe this is, let's do it one more time. Um, and if you need to, Fast forward, uh, I totally will understand. I'm not going to clean this whole thing off. I'm just going to take the red off from where it's going into the white stripes. Let's quickly. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did the wrong one. I was thinking I was on the stained paper. But I was talking, and it's hard to do everything all at the same time and pay good attention to what you're doing. So we'll just do this a super quick version. I was thinking I did a very, very light stain on that paper, and in fact, I had not stained that piece at all. Oops. Okay, let's add just a little bit of blue here. And then we'll do it actually on the right thing. I think 
think you can probably use the same plastic bag over and over and over at least 10 times. You just wipe it off in between or if you're in a hurry like I am right now, you just kind of keep coloring. Okay, so here it is one more time. Okay. Spritz my stained paper. And let's get this a little bit wet. And we'll try this again. It does look very different from the white, white ones. Say that's good and I'm going to pick up this blue that's run into that white area. Let's see, do I want to come back? I think I do. I do want to come back and add a little bit more red and a little bit of blue. All right, so I like this look where it's sort of distressed, but also I was rushing to do it. Um, they all look different, but it's really easy, you guys. So, okay, here's a couple things. Um, if you liked this tutorial or this project or idea, please consider sprinkling because I'm going to give these away. I'll pick randomly a few names from everyone who sprinkles and tells me uh, that they sprinkled. Um, I'll pick a few names and we'll, I'll send these out this week. I'll autograph the back of them and send them out this week. Uh, so sprinkle if you want to. Not if you don't want to, you of course don't have to. Um, if you haven't already liked and followed this page, DIY Dreaming, it's up here somewhere. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, if you haven't followed and subscribed to my YouTube channel, that would be good to do. And if you want to see what I have coming up this week, uh, and you haven't been getting my stuff regularly, that is a Facebook algorithm thing. And the best advice I can give you is to do it this. It's a thumb. Or this. That's a heart, sort of. Um, to say something to me in the comments uh, and to check to see if you have your notifications turned on. All those things make it slightly more likely that you'll see what I have going on. It's no guarantee. You can always just come back to this page, which is um, DIY Dreaming. Just type that in your search bar on Facebook. Uh, and then you can click the videos tab and watch whatever you want anytime you want. So here's the two that I made that are stained. And here's the three that I've made that are not stained. Aren't they cool? Penny says she loves them, and I see lots of people saying that they're sprinkling, which is awesome. 
Uh, so this week I'll be doing my usual kind of crafts that I do here. They'll be quick, they'll be easy, you don't have to have any power tools or super artistic skills. Um, they'll be sometimes a little different like making flags using plastic bags. Um, they'll be affordable and they're almost always going to involve either faith family, or flowers. This uh, flag is an F word also, and it, it could represent faith, family, and freedom. So, have a blessed rest of your day. If you didn't get to see Preston Crafting yesterday, where we made this, you should be able to just click the videos tab here Scroll down just a little ways, and it's labeled Price and Crafting. Um, and you can watch the video here. This was, I did a bunch of different styles of it, so this was a good one to watch. And I showed how to create this effect right here, too. So if you missed that, come back and watch that later. And I will, later this afternoon, I'll look through the list of everyone who sprinkled and told me that they did. And I will come back with the names and you guys can send me your mailing addresses after I identify who I'm going to be sending them to. And I'll get those in the mail this week. All right. Happy Memorial Day to you. Hope you have a blessed rest of your day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.